Shahid Mohsin Fakhrizadeh was an Iranian nuclear scientist, a professor, and the former head of the Physics Research Center. The research center run by Fakhrizadeh actually produced the first COVID-19 test kits for Iranians. On the 27th of November 2020, he was ambushed in Arb Sard, a city near Tehran. The enemies were so hell-bent on killing this man that they reportedly used three methods simultaneously. Explosives hidden in a truck were detonated. There were also reports of a suicide attack who later died from his injuries, and when those two failed, cowardly gunmen then shot at him and his bodyguards. It's also been reported that they used a remote-controlled machine gun. Ridden with bullets, Shahid Fakhrizadeh was then taken by helicopter to hospital where he left this world. Imam Khamenei has stated, one of our country's eminent scientists in the nuclear and defense fields, Dr. Mohsin Fakhrizadeh, has been martyred by brutal mercenaries. With his great enduring scientific efforts, he sacrificed his life on the path of God and the lofty status of martyrdom is his divine reward. Now, who committed this atrocity? Why don't you let us know in the comment section what you think? But while you think about it, here's Benjamin Netanyahu back in 2018. Iran lied. We're going to show you Iran's secret nuclear files. A key part of the plan was to form new organizations to continue the work. This is how Dr. Mohsen Fakhizadeh Head of Project Ahmad put it. Remember that name, Fakhizadeh. Remember that name, Fakhizadeh. Remember that name, Fakhizadeh. President Trump will decide on what to do with the nuclear deal. I'm sure he'll do the right thing. There have been secret meetings taking place between Netanyahu, the Saudis, and America. Connect the dots. Muslims have talent, but the enemies want to twist this reality. They want this to be the image of Islam, not this. Go back to the golden age of Islam. Look at personalities like Jabir ibn Hayyan, known as the father of modern chemistry, who was the student of Imam Sadiq salam, the sixth infallible Imam. It was the world of Islam that gave us algebra. Algorithms is a word derived from the name of a Persian scholar, Al-Khwarizmi. The first of many mind-blowing surgical innovations belongs to Muslims. If it weren't for a Muslim named Abu Ali Sina, we wouldn't have the methodology for drug trials without which we wouldn't have medicine as we have it today. It was Muslims that invented the syringe. It was the Muslims that had the first hospitals. If it weren't for Muslims, we wouldn't know God's wisdom is hidden even within this substance, ethanol, used in antiseptic, as antidote, as a medical solvent, and in pharmacology. And we owe this discovery to a philosopher named Muhammad Ibn Zakaria al-Razi. If it weren't for the Muslims, from the toothbrush to the magnifying glass, we wouldn't have coffee, we would still be trying to use Roman numerals. We wouldn't have glass windows. If it weren't for a Muslim, we wouldn't have hard soap. How did they accomplish these and many other groundbreaking discoveries and inventions which have vastly benefited humanity up until today? Well, you see, Islam gives one a special key. What is that special key? When anyone else might give up, the Muslim will remember that Allah commands his servants in the Quran, O oh man, surely you must strive to attain to your Lord, a hard striving until you meet him. Whatever you do, don't give up. You're not allowed to give up. You have too much potential. O oh, you who believe, if you help the cause of Allah, he will help you. Allah is assuring you that if you help him, then he will help you. And yes, the world might be against you. Time might be against you. People might not believe in you. Others might try and stop you, but he assures you in the glorious Quran. If Allah assists you, then there is none that can overcome you. You see, faith is that special key that Allah gives to the Muslims. Faith in Allah and faith in yourself to be able to say that, yes, I have the ability, I believe I have the ability to serve the cause of Allah. The enemy doesn't want you to have that faith. The enemy certainly doesn't want you to help the cause of Allah and to make the world a better place. How beneficial is it for the enemies to destroy your faith and make you think you can't make a difference. Whatever skill or talent Allah has bestowed upon you, as long as you are using that ability for the sake and cause of Allah, He will help you. And in fact, Islam has been training us every day, every moment, 
to know that if you truly do believe and exhaust your blood, sweat and tears in the path of Allah, you will win against all the odds. How do you think the Muslims of the past were able to accomplish what they accomplished? And it's Islam which gives you the killer edge when it comes to scientific and intellectual progress in particular. It tells you constantly to think about existence, to ponder on the creation, to reflect on your own essence. In fact, it's the Holy Quran itself which challenges us if you are able to pass beyond the regions of the heavens and the earth then pass. So it should be no surprise that the first person to fly in the skies was not, as has been popularized by the West, the Wright brothers, but it was in fact a Muslim by the name of Abbas ibn Farnas a thousand years before the non-Muslims. In today's world, Muslims are harassed and treated like criminals at airports. Man, would you even be flying if it weren't for Muslims? It is the unequivocal and undeniable reality that if the Western world and indeed even the Eastern world is technologically advanced today, then it is because of what the Muslims did for us yesterday. Muslims had the eye of the tiger. They had the special key. They had that perseverance and faith and self-belief and so they achieved scientific, military and intellectual feats because of which the world is benefiting even today. What happened to us? Where did that special key go? I mean, if you look at the Muslim world today, it's in ruins. What happened? Well, firstly, we stopped believing in Allah and in ourselves. We started turning and looking for help and guidance from the Europeans and Americans instead of relying on our own God-given ability. Secondly, the Muslims were attacked left, right and centre. And because of our lack of resolve and lack of unity, the enemies defeated and humiliated us. And thirdly, the enemies assassinated our talented individuals. Just as today they assassinated Shaheed Fakhrizadeh, the enemies have throughout our history killed the talented individuals of the Muslim world. Like Yahya al-Mashad, an Egyptian nuclear scientist and lecturer at Alexandria University who was killed in Paris allegedly by Israeli Mossad in 1980 and other Egyptian academics too. And like Dr. Athar Ali, a Pakistani system engineer and rocket scientist who was murdered in Karachi 2003. Like Darvish Razayanajad, Iranian electrical engineer in 2011. And in 2012, Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan, an Iranian electrical engineer. In fact, when America invaded Iraq in 2003, hundreds of Iraqi academics and PhDs were killed. The Iraqi Ministry of Higher Education reported that over 3,250 academics had fled the country between February and August of 2006. Throughout the Muslim nations, the enemy has been targeting the very people who have the God-given ability to advance the Muslim world. We need to stop running away from the Muslim lands. We abandon our homes in Pakistan, in Iran, in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq. We abandon our roots, go and get an education in the West so that we can become their employees. And then we turn and look with disdain at where we came from. Gosh, look how backwards they are. Well, what right do we have to look down upon the Muslim lands when we were a valuable resource? But instead of helping to build our Islamic homelands, we abandoned them to go and work for the slave masters of the West. The very same masters who now bomb the Muslim countries. And then we've convinced ourselves that we can live comfortably in the West and we can be completely silent against the atrocities being committed by those governments. It's, it's crazy. Look, as long as you are putting your skills and your talents to use for their system, they won't have any problem with you. And they will even reward you. It's the moment that you put your skills and talents for the sake of the Islamic movement, that's when they will target you. Imagine if Shahid Fakhrizadeh had worked in America. He probably would have gotten scientific achievement awards and Nobel prizes. It's because he was serving the Islamic system that he was targeted. Today, nobody is target killing Elon Musk or the heads of NASA or Apple or Google or any of the scientists of the Western world, while those great thinkers of the Muslim world are being categorically assassinated. Why? Because their worst nightmare 
is that the Muslim world becomes advanced technologically, ideologically, economically, media-wise, and scientifically. But let me tell you, it will happen, inshallah. You might think that we're really advanced today, looking at all the different technologies and architecture that exists in the modern world. But you need to know that we are cavemen today compared to what the Islamic world of the future will accomplish. People forget that the imminent arrival of Imam Mahdi Sharif not only means that the world will be filled with justice, but also that there will be a global revolution of knowledge that will benefit all of humanity. Imam Sadiq salam explained that all knowledge is contained within 27 letters. And throughout all of human history, only two of those letters have yet been discovered. So then when our Qa'im al-Mahdi makes his advent, he will bring with him the other 25 letters of knowledge and he will spread these among the people. And today, people across the world have recognized that the only nation on earth which is openly preparing the grounds for that great final savior is the Islamic Republic of Iran. If you haven't recognized that yet, then shame on you, because even the despicable Saudi prince has recognized it. Iran now, people say about me, oh, he's just saying that because he's a paid agent of Iran. Firstly, neither myself nor Islamic Pulse has ever taken a penny from the Iranian government. Secondly, I have always been a vocal supporter of Iran and the Islamic Revolution well before I even came to Iran. And you can ask anybody who knew me back in the day when I was in the UK. And thirdly, we believe in what we're doing. We know fully well that England and America and the Saudis and Israel <laughs> ain't going to be happy about what we do. But myself and my comrades are more than willing to make enemies with the oppressors for the sake of Muslims globally, for the sake of Islam, and for the sake of the cause of Imam Mahdi. No government in the world can buy that kind of loyalty. And we have seen with our own eyes that the Iranians will stop at nothing to build for the cause of Imam Mahdi. That is why we see it as our duty to support the Islamic Republic of Iran. Just look at the unwavering scientific progress the Iranians have made since the Islamic Revolution of 1979. Iran is top of the world in science growth. In fact, scientific output has grown 11 times faster in Iran than the world average faster than any other country. This is the cause of Imam Mahdi. Believe it or not, there have been a number of studies which show that Iran's scientific progress has been outstanding when compared to the rest of the world. One such study concluded that if this scientific growth of Iran continues, it would not be surprising to see Iran as one of the most powerful countries in the field of science in the world. This is what it means to truly prepare for Imam Mahdi and to restore the dignity and the honor of Muslims and Islam globally. It's no wonder why the enemies are afraid of Iran, scientists in particular. And let me remind you, all of this has been accomplished after the Islamic Revolution of 1979, when Iran booted out the Western-backed dictator, they rejected American hegemony, and they united under the righteous Islamic scholar, the Faqih. Because they did this and truly prepared, which was a necessary step towards the Zuhur of Imam al-Mahdi. In the area of invention patents, before the revolution, Iran ranked 38th in the world. After the revolution, Iran ranked 7th. Before the revolution, there were only 16 universities throughout the country. After the revolution, there are at least 267 universities. That's more than double the number of universities in the UK. Before the revolution, only 154,000 undergraduate students. After the revolution, 4.5 million students are enrolled in universities. In this noble cause and mission, they will not be deterred by whatever the enemies throw at them. 
because the leadership is stronger than a mountain. Imam Khamenei has stressed back in 2018, the momentum of the country's scientific movement in the past 20 years should not slow down. Rather, it should be maintained for the next 20 to 30 years until we reach the climax. You want to know what it means to have faith in Allah and to believe in yourself? Then look no further than the revolutionary nation of Iran. And by the way, this is not just the practical reality that we see happening in the world. No, no, no. The Prophet and Ahlul Bayt have told us, they have foreseen and they have prophesied that this would happen. Whether you're Sunni or Shia, read your tafsir of Surah 62 verse 3 where the Holy Prophet Muhammad put his blessed hand on the shoulder of Salman the Persian and said, if faith were in the constellations, him and his people would acquire it. This is the land about which Imam Kadhim has said, a man from the people of Qum will call the people towards the truth. A group of men will be attracted to him like pieces of iron to a magnet Strong winds will not shake them, they will not flinch from war, and they will not be afraid. They will trust in Allah, and the good end belongs to the pious. Now, does this mean that if you are not in Qum and not in Iran, that you are useless? Far from it. Our slogan is wherever you are, because if whatever skill, gift, or talent Allah has bestowed upon you, if you are using it, for the sake of the Islamic revolution sincerely, then you are a supporter and a helper and an aid to the cause of Imam Mahdi Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif wherever you are. But we also have to be practical and look at the realities. Where are our mobile apps? Where are our tech savvy people? Where are our hackers? Where are the artists of the Muslim world? Where are the engineers and the scientists? Why are we still relying on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and technologies made by the enemies, which they then use to imprison and spy on us? And then they have the power to ban us, delete our profiles, silence us and shadow ban us. Wake up and start believing in your own ability to actually make a difference. Without that belief, and without that special key, you won't be able to do anything. With that key, we will accomplish miracles by the permission of Allah. And as a final message to those who killed our Shaheed Fakhri Zadeh, know this, your efforts have backfired because Imam Khamenei has issued two commands to all the relevant administrators. Number one, to investigate this crime and firmly prosecute its perpetrators and its commanders. Meaning that there is going to be hell to pay, not only for the henchmen who executed the Shaheed, but also for the figureheads who issued the commands. And we're in no rush. And number two, to continue the martyr's scientific and technological efforts in all the sectors where he was active. Meaning that not only is the work not going to stop, but those who are striving are going to double their efforts. You think you make us weaker by executing and murdering us, but you fail to understand. With every drop of our blood which falls to the floor, the movement grows stronger more and more. But if only you could use your head and think not of those who are slain in the way of Allah as dead.